Good evening, and welcome to special town meeting and annual town meeting of June 14th at Town of East Bridgewater. Uh, procedurally, I'm going to read the non-resident attendees for both meetings. Michelle Dahl, Jim Purcell, Rebecca Johnson, Lee Nguyen, John Clifford, Chris Kenny, Paula Wolf, Melissa Morrissey, Phyllis Terrell, Ryan McGonigal, Elizabeth Legault, Kate Byrne, Andrew Gentile, William Clements, John Phelan, Senator Walter Timothy, Representative Allison Sullivan, Representative Michelle Dubois, Congressman Stephen Lynch, Shana Barnes Monroe, his assistant, Christopher McGee, Jason Trepenia. At this time, I would like you to rise and we can pledge allegiance. The flag is to my right. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It being approximately 7.10, I'm going to have Tom Clerk, Sue Patrick, read the for the special town meeting. To any of the constables of East Bridgewater in said county of Plymouth, Commonwealth, Massachusetts, Greetings. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of the town of East Bridgewater, who, being qualified to vote in elections and town affairs, to meet at the Junior Senior High School, 143 Plymouth Street, in said East Bridgewater, on Monday, the 14th day of June, 2021, at 7 p.m., then and there to act upon the enclosed articles to wit. You are directed to serve this warrant by posting a copy thereof attested by you in writing in each of the six public places in the town at least 14 days before the time of holding the meeting called for in the warrant. Therefore, fail not and make, to make due return of this warrant with your doings thereon to the town clerk of said town on or before the 28th day of May 2021, given under our hands this 25th day of May in the year of our Lord. 2021, the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Sue. Before we get into Article 1 of the special town meeting, I'm going to ask Congressman Lynch to please join me up here for a few words. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, great to be with you. My name is Steve Lynch. I, I have the great honor of representing the town of East Bridgewater in the United States Congress. Uh, I thought I might just uh, give a brief summary of, of, of recent events in Washington, D.C., uh, especially those impacting most directly the town of East Bridgewater. As you may remember, uh, last March we had the CARES Act, uh, which was a plan uh, offered by Congress to provide direct relief to cities and towns and states, tribal governments and counties uh, in order to address the health, and health impacts of the, of the pandemic. Uh, pursuant to that uh, act, uh, the town of Bridgewater, East Bridgewater received about $980,000 directly, but for the specific purpose of dealing with the health impacts. So uh, funding was available for uh, first responders, fire and police who did a, a magnificent job, but also to, uh, to facilitate the testing, uh, tracking and tracing of uh, pandemic cases, COVID-19 cases within, within the town. Uh, more recently, uh, Congress passed the American Rescue Plan Act. And uh, unlike the CARES Act, the American Rescue Plan Act uh, provided 1.4 million, approximately $1.4 million to the town of East Bridgewater, but was really uh, discretionary, fully discretionary to, to the Board of Selectmen, to town meeting, and to your uh, local officials in order that we might, uh, well, let's put it this way. We're dealing with 50 states and thousands of communities across uh, cities and towns and counties across America. And all those cities, towns, and counties were in different states of, uh, of uh, disrepair, if you will, because of the pandemic. So we thought in, instead of trying to fix one size fits all rules for that money, uh, we thought it would be in the best interest of, of the local communities that, that town government be able to steer those fund, that funding to the, to the areas where they needed the most help. 
Uh, there were broad uh, funding mandates within that bill uh, for opening up schools, and I, I see the superintendent here, uh, and, and also for making sure that uh, there was PPP loans for small businesses. We, we passed $15.6 billion for a restaurant uh, revitalization plan, which uh, we lost over 250,000 small businesses in the United States during this pandemic. But now with the, with the restrictions uh, coming off, a lot of those businesses are, are being revived and, uh, and, and restarted. So uh, I just want to say it's a great honor for me to, to represent you. Uh, we have a great uh, team here in terms of the uh, elected officials here in East Bridgewater. I know that Representative Michelle Dubois is here, uh, one of your state representatives, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, uh, she appreciates the, the great honor of uh, serving you as well up at the State House. So with that, uh, I just want to thank you for being involved in, in town meeting. This is really where, where it all begins. Uh, we're in the, the, the other piece of legislation that is pending right now is the, uh, the Transportation and Infrastructure Bill. And you probably, if you, if you follow that type of thing, uh, we're having a debate actively in Congress right now. We just passed the draft bill in the House on Thursday night, actually 5 o'clock in the morning on Thursday morning. Uh, and uh, so what we've done is tried to get uh, priority projects recommended by cities and towns all across America to determine what those priorities for each, in, each individual city and town and community are. So uh, we've been communicating with uh, your town manager and, and also, uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Purcell uh, and trying to determine which are the priority projects for East Bridgewater and, uh, and also neighboring towns, because some, some of these projects uh, uh, touch on several different municipalities, several different towns. So uh, when they're, we're in the process of doing that right now and uh, eager to find out which, which uh, projects would be a top priority for, for East Bridgewater. But that, that process continues. Again, it's an honor for me to represent you in, in the United States Congress. Uh, God bless you for attending town meeting. God bless. East Bridgewater, and may God continue to bless these United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman, for attending. We appreciate the news of what's going on down there. Now we can do our business here. Uh, Article 1 we're passing over in the, sp in the special town meeting. Uh, Article 2, Mr. Haynes from the Department of Public Works. I move that the town board transfer to the sum of $218,437.62 to the FY 2021 snow and ice budget to cover a deficit created by the winter snow removal. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Okay. Motion made second. Finance committee recommendation? Finance committee recommends the article. Mr. Haynes, for discussion, if any. Uh, simply in the past, the deficit, the snow and ice deficit has typically been carried forward into the the next fiscal year, uh, we're trying to be, for the sake of more transparency, and address the current deficit in the current fiscal year, which then allows for a cleaner free cash availability uh, going into FY22. Thank you. Any further discussion on Article 2 as presented? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 2 as presented say aye. 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 Opposed? Article 2 passes. Article 3. Chief Harris from the Fire Department. Mr. Moderator, I think we were going to pass over this article. Oh, we pa I apologize, I didn't know. We're passing over Article 3. Thank you, Chief. Article 4, Chief O'Brien from the Police Department. <coughs> Mr. Moderator, I move that the town Vote to amend Article 3 of the annual town meeting held on June 23, 2020, account number 1 210 3968 5596, tasers, by amending the purpose of the article from the purchase of tasers to other specialized equipment needed by the police department. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Finance Committee recommendation? Finance Committee recommends the article. Chief, for discussion, if any. 
Yeah, firearms have reached about 15 years old. They are no longer supported by the manufacturer, so we are in the process of purchasing new firearms. Thank you. Any further discussion on Article 4 as presented? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 4 as presented say aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 4 passed unanimously. Thank you. Article 5 passing over. And since these are passed over, we don't need to do any procedural work on it. Uh, Article 6, Arts Council. Uh, David Sheedy from Board of Selectmen. Article 6, to see if the town will raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds or otherwise provide a sum of money to account 1, 910-520-5965, transfer to Special Revenue Fund the sum of $5,537.88 to account number 21-693-10-220. 4971 EBAC for the purpose of repaying money spent from the state grant account in error during fiscal year 2020 or take any other action thereon or relative relation thereto. I have a motion. Do I have a second? second. Motion made and seconded. Does Finance Committee have a recommendation? Finance Committee recommends the article. Uh, Mr. Sheedy for discussion, if any. <coughs> this is just money that we had spent in our uh, fiscal year. We're just trying to move it into the correct account. Thank you. Any further discussion on Article 6 is presented? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 6 is presented, say aye. 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 Opposed? Six pass unanimously. Article 7, Mr. Spagon, Board of Selectmen. Yes, Mr. Moderator. To see if the town will vote to appropriate and transfer from account number 1-0-359-3590 free cash, the sum of $50,000, to the account number one 426 dash 3984-5790 redevelopment study the purpose of the redevelopment study by Western and Sampson or to take other action there on or in relation thereto. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Motion made second. Finance Committee recommendation. Finance Committee recommends the article. Mr. Spagon, discussion if any. Yes, uh, Mr. Murray, this is uh, phase two. Uh, last June we were appropriated money for Western and Sampson to do a feasibility study. I can say we were very successful in that to the point where the city of Brockton has signed a letter of intent with the town of East Bridgewater to allow storage in the district of Whitman Street down Route 18 to Highland Street, about 300 acres. We will continue to pursue this uh, redevelopment of that area with uh, Weston and Sampson. This money will be used to continue the work that needs to be done. Thank you. Any further discussion on Article 7 as presented? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 7, Article 7 is presented, say aye. 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 Opposed? Article 7 passed unanimously. Article 8 is passed over. So, I can entertain a motion to adjourn the special town meeting. Motion made, seconded. All in favor? Aye. aye. That ends the special town meeting. I'm going to have Mrs. Gilpatrick read the warrant for the annual town meeting. To any and all of the constables of the town of East Bridgewater in Center County of Plymouth, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Greetings. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of the town of East Bridgewater, who being qualified to vote in elections and town affairs, to meet at the Junior Senior High School, 143 Plymouth Street, in said East Bridgewater, on Monday, the 14th day of June, 2021, at 7 p.m. Then and there to act upon the articles and the enclosed articles to wit. You were directed to, to serve this warrant by posting copy thereof attested to by you in writing in each of six public places in the town at least seven days prior before the time for holding the meeting called in the warrant. Herefore, fail not and make due return of this warrant with your doings thereon, to the town clerk of, of said town on or before the 28th day of May, 2021, given under our hands this 25th day of May in the year of the Lord, 2021, the Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Ms. Gilpatrick. So this year and last year we used what they call consent agenda. It was allowed a number of years ago to basically expedite uh, procedural or technical articles that we vote every year. This year, the consent agenda includes Article 1, 
four, five, seven, eight. Uh, I will certainly entertain, and, and if you want to take a quick look, you can. I will certainly entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda. What that will do will accept those articles without any further discussion. Those are the ones like enter, enter into contract with the state, uh, setting up the annual revolving funds. Um, so if I will certainly entertain a motion to take those out of order, one, four, five, seven, eight, and pass them as a consent agenda. Do I have a motion for that? Motion, Mr. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion or is there any one particular article anybody would like to discuss in those, in those groups? And I'll give you a few seconds to look at them. These are the same ones we did last year. All set? Anybody have any questions on any particular articles? Seeing none, all in favor of accepting the articles in the consent agenda say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. So we start now with Article 2. Let me get my right list here. the budget and it uh, is going to be Dan Pika from the Finance Committee. Yep. Thank you. I move that the town fix the salaries of all elected officials for the fiscal year 2022 and appropriate funds for the payment of said salaries and compensation including the approval and funding of the town's obligations under the collective bargaining agreements completed in the fiscal and calendar year. The payment of debt and interest provide for a reserve fund and for charges expenses and outlays of the several town departments for the ensuing 12-month period through June 30th, 2022. All is set forth in the budget presented by the Finance Committee and as funding, therefore, to appropriate from taxation the sum of $32,703,703, transfer the sum of $12,339,778 from projected state aid receipts the sum of $2,900,648 from estimated local receipts and to transfer from ambulance reserved receipts account the sum of $715,000 and further the sum of $1,181,465 from other sources. $2,294,619 from Water Enterprise estimated receipts and $500,000 from Water Enterprise retained earnings. $898,048 from Solid Waste Enterprise Fund estimated receipts and $100,000 from Solid Waste Enterprise Fund retained earnings. All to fund the budget as recommend recommended by the Finance Committee as shown in the final column of Article 2 and the warrant for the June 14, 2021 annual town meeting. I have a motion to have a second. <laughs> motion second. Uh, I obviously we have a finance committee recommendation. Do you have the committee? We recommend Thank the you. article. Uh, for any any further discussion, <laughs> Mr. Peaker? None. <laughs> uh, any any further discussion on Article Two presented, Mr. Weinerfeller? Is that, is that the total budget? That's the total budget, correct. Mr. Weinerfeller. Jim Widenfellow, Leo Way. I've got a question, and I'm not opposing, I'm just asking questions. Uh, on the budget, under total electricity, uh, line 195, when they put the solar panel farm up on Highland Avenue, Highland Street, we were sold a bill of goods that that was going to reduce our funds for electricity. 50,000 or better dollars a year. And I'm not saying that it hasn't, I'm just wondering where it shows in this line uh, someplace. It looks like it's gone up um, 77,500 over last year. I can't explain. Do you, you want to defer that, Mr. Pika? Yes. 
Uh, I've got I've got three or four more, Bob. If you want to take them. Oh, you want to do them all at once? You want to do them all? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, building inspection has gone up seventy-nine thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. What line item is that? Jim? Oh, I'm sorry, two forty-one. <coughs> That's gone up $79,000 over FY 2000, what's it, 20? And it's gone up 13156 over this year, or last, well, this year. And then line 302, I know there's not a lot we can probably do about this, but it's ridiculous. Uh, line 302, the South Shore Vogue is up $830,000. I know they're putting a big addition on over there, but are we funding the whole thing? And then uh, line 610, the library, but you never thought me even question this one, <laughs> uh, is up 31,153. I'm sure that there's a reason for this. These are the, just the ones that are really outstanding over the, the rest of the budget, which everyone seems to have come in a reasonable figure. But these are way out of line with the rest of it. Thank see how you. we can address those. Uh, the 195, would that be under building facilities or building maintenance? 195 is the, <coughs> the electricity. Yeah. Is, is John? Uh, up. Or, uh, hi, Phyllis Terrell, town accountant. The net metering credits means that we still have to pay 100% of our electric bills. Um, the credits we get are, uh, we pay 80% to the field owners. We get 20%, which have to come back in as uh, a fee type thing, and it's in your local receipts for next year. That's how the, um, when net metering credits first started, that's the way the Department of Revenue made you do it. So we pay 100% of our bills this year. We pay ourselves the $50,000, which comes in through your local receipts. It's kind of convoluted, but that's what they made us do. Thank you, Mr. L. The building inspection issue. You don't see uh, fit, uh, building facilities manager here. Do I? The building, the building inspector is not here, uh, Mr. Weinerfeld. That would be his uh, submission. I apologize, but he's not present tonight. Uh, the other one we had was the high, regional high school assessment. Uh, Superintendent Legault. Uh, South, it's Southeastern, and we don't offer that programming. I think it's up 106,000, about 110 from where it was last year. So we do have more students going to the programming. We do not offer that here. We are working on a consortium with other districts right now to offer some of that programming here and sending our students to other local high schools for some of the programs to bring them back. So we don't have that additional stuff. If Southeastern offers um, uh, construction, we don't have that here. If they offer um, uh, Food services, automotive, we don't have that here. Cosmetology, we don't, we don't, we don't have those programs. And because it is a local, it's opportunity and access, so the kids have the opportunity and access to go. Could you, could you make sure you speak into the mic? Uh, thank you. I don't have a problem with the kids going. I think it's a great opportunity, and I think more kids should be going. However, we sitting, we built this place a few years ago now. Down back, we've got sitting a metal shop, a woodworking shop, and I don't know what the other, forget what the third one is. And we're sending kids someplace else to the tune of $106,000 increase a year. Something's wrong, folks. <clears throat> Do you want to address that, Superintendent LaGault? Some of the programs we can't offer because we have a vocational agreement with the state. And vocational ed offers programming, and we do not, we cannot offer some of those programs because they, we are in a consortium with the state and with vocational ed. However, you are right, we do have metal, we do have a woodworking shop. They are expensive to run. It is an increased, it, it's probably 
it's probably less expensive for us to send the students out to Southeastern to get these programmings, to get their certificates in these areas. That's why vocational ed is popular, and that's why it is common, and that's why it is, um, it accommodates and offers opportunity and access for our students, and it accommodates a public school to continue with the, with the regular or general ed population and, uh, or not population, the, the coursework. Um, the Vokes have a specialty that we don't have, and they, and now they're, we're competing against the Vokes sometimes when it comes to, because now they're offering uh, AP courses, they're offering uh, mathematics and English and social studies, and you can go and get your four-year um, high school diploma from a regional. We are looking at that, and like I said, we have joined a consortium with other local high school, or other local districts, and we'll be talking about that probably at the next meeting or, what, or the first meeting in August. So we, I, believe me, I don't want to see a million dollars go to the VOC, and I certainly understand. However, we do not have that programming here, and we do have an agreement with the vocational schools. One more, yeah, one more, Jim. Then I want to move on to the library so we can get that addressed. I think now I'm really upset. We built this place 10 years ago, was it, David? And we knew at the time, if I'm not mistaken, that we couldn't offer woodworking. We couldn't offer automotive. And we still put the shops downstairs. Who was thinking? Do you see my problem? That has to be a million dollars sitting down there that we can't use. I want to move on to the next. Uh, I think uh, Christopher McGee, is he he's here? He is. Could you come up and... Uh, See if you can address the concern with the library. Uh, yes, so the, the bulk of the increase that you see in the total personnel services for the library, uh, about half of it is a, a change in one of the uh, staff positions that was a, a, pro, a paraprofessional position and we moved it a couple of years ago to a professional position. We upgraded that, that's the YA librarian position. <coughs> And then also my own salary um, during contract negotiations was raised and then the, re the remainder of it is just the 2% COLA plus step increases and also some changes in longevity because several of our staff members are long term. And as they reach a new level of longevity, it goes up a good bit. Thank you, Mr. McGee. Any further discussion on Article 2 as presented? Wolf. Pronounced Wolf. I said Wolf. <laughs> Oh, I thought you said woof. <laughs> <laughs> Man, already? It's early. Hi, Kathy Wolf, 272 Laurel Street. Um, I just have, I, I have a follow-up question on the metal shop and the woodworking. Um, are those not used at all? Is that what I'm trying to, what you're saying? That even when I was in school a million years ago, we were allowed to have home ec and the guys went to shop and it was an hour every week, but at least we were able to use the facilities, and we're not using them at all? We are using them. They are used. We just don't. The programming is not as intense right. as it would be at Southeastern. Our students do have those opportunities to go to woodworking. We have Manufacturing 1, Manufacturing 2. We're working on, we're opening a robotics lab. We're, we're looking at 21st century work skills. We're looking at what companies want and need. And we're working with, we have agreements with Massasoit Community College. We have agreements with Bridgewater State. We're uh, working with a consortium to get into UMass Dartmouth. So there are things that we're trying to do and to use those, those shops as well as, as, well as the um, regular requirements, the comprehensive education of the Commonwealth. Those shops are being used and they are full. The students are using them, and they are full. We can't get, a, we can't get enough kids uh, in them throughout the four years, to tell you the truth. They're, they're full. So yes, they are being used. Good. Um, I'd like to offer more, but when you offer more comes an additional a person or people and additional into the budget. So we are looking at those things. This is not something that we're not, we don't constantly talk about. OK. Now, it just sounded as if we were sitting, you know, completely unused, and that's absolutely not the case. Okay. My second question was, um, 
line item 151, which is um, town council general expenses. I know that this is something that um, we have an agreement with a law firm, but my concern is that from the actual FY20 amount of $120,000 and change to the fiscal 21 and fiscal 22, it actually went up $55,000, which is a 46% increase. And I just wanted to understand why it would jump so great, so greatly. Uh, Mr. Purcell, <coughs> town manager. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. Through you, <coughs> um, in, the, uh, uh, in the town meeting book, you'll note the fiscal 20 column uh, shows actual uh, expenditures, and uh, fiscal 21 shows appropriations. Uh, for the current fiscal year. In the next column is the fiscal 22 departmental request, uh, the amounts that you'll be voting on tonight. Uh, my understanding is that the amounts requested uh, on an annual basis have been uh, relatively static uh, over the years, including fiscal 20. Um, uh, there's a, a, a high probability that $175,000 was indeed budgeted, but only $120,000 was spent. Um, it was probably an off year. It was probably not a year where collective bargaining agreements and other things had to be renewed. And perhaps there were fewer land use cases than, um, uh, uh, than, uh, than we normally see. So I would celebrate the fiscal 20 number. Thank you, Mr. Purcell. Any further discussion on Article 2 as presented? Seeing none, this requires a two-thirds vote. Um, so, seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. Uh, Article 3, Mr. Pika. I move that the town vote to transfer from general stabilization the amount of $1,072,541 to fund the purchases. I have a motion to waive a second. Sorry. Motion made a second. Uh, Finance Committee recommendation? Finance Committee recommends the article. Capital Planning Committee recommendation? Capital Planning recommends the article. And when you say the purchase, you're talking about the ones that, is it on the screen in front of you? They're listed in Article 3. Yeah, I just want to see if it's on the screen for the people. Uh, Mr. Uh, Pika, for discussion, if any. No, this just goes to fund uh, the capital request of various departments throughout town. All right, any further discussion on Article 3 as presented? This again requires a two-thirds vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Article 3 passed unanimously. Article 4, we're skipping over. That was in the consent agenda. Article 5 was in the consent agenda. Article 6, Carol Julius, Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I make a motion that the town vote to adopt the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 40U. A motion to have a second. Sorry. Motion made. Uh, Finance Committee, have a recommendation on this? Finance Committee recommends the article. Thank you. For discussion, if any, Ms. Julius? Uh, no, I would just go by the explanation that's printed in the warrant. Okay. Any further discussion on Article 6 is presented? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I'll pass unanimously. Article 7 was in the consent agenda. Article 8 was in the consent agenda. Article 9, Mr. Sheedy, Board of Selectmen. Mr. Moderator, I see if the town will extend the effective date of Article 26 of the June 23rd, 2020 annual town meeting to amend the personnel bylaw by replacing it with the following from the effective date of July 1st, 2021 to effective date of January 1st, 2022. That's printed. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Uh, Mr. Sheedy, for discussion. It's last year at uh, the annual town meeting, we voted to um, basically disperse the personnel board and to put most of that um, regulations and all the requirements and the authorization through the board of selectmen to the town administrator. And as we all know right now, we only have Jim Purcell as an interim town administrator. So oh, we have no one that would be able to. <laughs> How to make him feel good, David. <laughs> that thing. Yeah. But he's doing a great job. <laughs> and we have really no one to run this program. So the personnel board will stay in effect until then. Permanent. 
All right. Any further discussion on Article 9 is presented? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 9 is presented, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 9 passed unanimously. Article 10, Mr. Fagone. Mr. Moderator, to see if the town will vote to appropriate and transfer from account number 1-0-359-3590 free cash, the sum of 100,000, to account number 1-195-1986-5435 electrical improvements and upgrades, or to take any other action thereon or there for. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Motion made, seconded. Finance committee recommendation? Finance committee recommends the Capital article. Capital plan, do they recommendation? Capital planning did not. Okay. And Mr. Spagon, for discussion, if any? Uh, quite simply, just to fund improvements to the electrical services in town buildings. Right, any further discussion on Article 10 is presented? Mr. Weidenfeller. I think this is the same thing we voted $100,000 for last year. Yep. How often are we going to upgrade our electrical service? <coughs> Mr. Moderator, it's my understanding. Founded. Wait a second, one at a time. I'm sorry, go ahead. I apologize, sir. Mr. For Purcell. Go ahead. May I? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, my understanding uh, uh, through you, Mr. Moderator, is this is the second year of a, uh, of a four year program. Uh, I, uh, you funded it this year. Uh, you're being asked to, uh, uh, to fund it for the next uh, uh, fiscal year and uh, uh, probably two years after that. Uh, the total program cost, my understanding is, is about $400,000, $100 hundred dollars a pop over four fiscal years is the current plan. Mr. Moderator, I think if you look at last year's meeting, that was not explained to the, to the body of the town. There was nothing said about this being a four-year project. We were replacing light bulbs. Any further discussion on Article 10 as presented? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 10 say aye. 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 Opposed? Article 10 passes, by majority. Article 11, uh, Ms. Julius, Board of Selectmen. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to accept the provisions of Commonwealth Massachusetts Acts of 1998, Chapter 194, Section 419, or similar authorizing legislation, and further to see if the town will vote to accept the provisions of an intermunicipal agreement for regional cooperation of solid waste and recycling services for the South Shore Recycling Cooperative for a term through June 30th, 2023, copy of which is on file in the office of the town clerk, and further to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to execute and deliver said intermunicipal agreement and such other terms and conditions as may be set forth therein. I have a motion to have a second. Does uh, the Finance Committee have a recommendation on this? Finance Committee recommends the article. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Julie, for discussion, if any? Um, it's just to allow the DPW to join a consortium with area towns to save on costs. And if there were any follow-up questions, I would defer to John Haynes. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion on Article 11 as presented? Mrs. Wolf, <laughs> with an L. Um, I'm just wondering what kind of cost savings, what kind of um, changes they're going to implement and I think I'd like to have John Haynes come yes, he's up going to address and address your it. Questions. I'm going to have him address your questions. Mr. Haynes, Board of Public Works. Uh, if the, the moderator, if you would allow, I'm actually going to ask uh, Rob Ken, the operations. Yes, absolutely. To address this. Absolutely, Mr. Ken. Very involved in this. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. There's a bunch of benefits to joining this um, group. Um, DEP runs a program where you apply for grants, you need certain points, the more points you get, the more money you get. Simply joining this group gets us up to $1,000, and that's just one of the benefits. Uh, there's probably 15 I could list. Um, re reduction in the cost of hazardous waste day. Um, different recycling incentive program, so. The program itself will probably pay for itself in a year or two so and if it doesn't we have the option to to back out so. thank you mr ken uh does that any anything further on article 11 as presented seeing none all in favor article 11 as presented, say aye. Aye. aye opposed article 11 passes by majority article 12 mr sheedy mr moderator i make a motion to see if the town will vote 
to appropriate and transfer from account number 10359-3590, free cash, the sum of $37,791, to account number 1910-3987-5164, contractual obligation for retirement for the purpose of funding the town's contractual obligations <coughs> for retiring employees or take any other action thereon. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Uh, Finance Committee recommendation. Finance Committee recommends the article. Mr. Sheedy for discussion, if any. This is just to bring up the, make sure we have all money to cover all our retirees. Thank you. Any further discussion on Article 12 as presented? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 12 as presented say aye. 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 Opposed? I saw past majority. It's by unanimous. Uh, Article 13, Chief Harron. Mr. Moder, I move that the town vote to transfer from account number 22-231-835-5966. Ambulance receipts transfer to stabilization the sum of $125,000 to account number 82-122-911-4972 capital stabilization transfer from special revenue for Tower 1. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Committee second. Finance Committee recommendation. Finance Committee recommends the article. Chief Haven for discussion, if any. Yeah, last year at town meeting, the town approved uh, $1.4 million, $4 million to purchase a, a new tower truck. $700,000 came from that from the EMS account last year, and this is going to be paid off through the EMS account over the next four years. This is payment number one of four or five. Thank you, Chief. Any further discussion on Article 13 as presented? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 13 is presented, say aye. 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 Opposed? Article 13 passes unanimously. Article 14, uh, Mr. Gardner, Planning Board. Yes, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article uh, 14 as printed in the warrant. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Wait a second. Uh, Mr. Gardner, for discussion, if any. Yes, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Article 14 is the amendment to the Town of East Bridgewater zoning bylaw that would change the requirement for outdoor dining service at restaurants from a special permit issued by a planning board to a simple site plan review uh, done by the planning board upon application uh, with the planning building department. Uh, the primary purpose of this is to avoid the potential catch-22 that's coming up with multiple outdoor dining facilities that were approved under the emergency orders due to the, uh, the coronavirus. Uh, when those emergency orders end in their total, I believe it's going to be this weekend, theoretically, those outdoor dining sites would no longer be uh, permitted without a, a then subsequent filing for a special permit. Our feeling is that those, those should be done under site plan approval. I just also note that outdoor dining does not increase the capacity of the restaurant as the licensing capacity of the restaurant belongs to both the Board of Health and the Board of Selectmen under their permits that are issued. So it would only change the, the permitting process from a special permit, uh, which after the fact could be a, a serious problem since some of these exist, to a site plan approval. Thank you, Mr. Garner. Any further discussion on Article 14 as presented? Mr. Moderator, can we just have Mr. Garner clarify that the planning board recommended the article? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, Roy, do you have a planning board recommendation? Yeah, that's the second part. <laughs> yeah, so the, the planning board voted at their public hearing as required under the State Zoning Act, uh, seven to nothing, unanimous, to uh, recommend approval of this uh, bylaw change at town meeting. Thank you, Mr. Garner. I apologize for not uh, giving you that earlier. Uh, do I have any further discussion on Article 14 as presented? See, this will require a two-thirds vote. Uh, seeing, uh, seeing no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Article 14 passed unanimously. Article 15, Mr. Gardner. Yes, Mr. Moderator, I'd also like to move Article 15 as printed in the warrant. I have a motion to have a second. Uh, for discussion, if any, Mr. Gardner. Yes, this is to correct an error that was actually originally generated back in 1987 uh, when, when we revised the terms in the industrial district in terms of what required a special permit. 
there was a sentence left in note 10 of the general requirements in the zoning bylaw that, that stated that, that all permits or all development within the industrial district will require a special permit. That conflicts with the new statements that were added in, in 1987. Uh, this was actually brought up by a, a, a state board that was reviewing an application we had made for a grant that we had conflicting language in the bylaw. Uh, I'll give you a, the planning board recommendation on that, <laughs> which, which followed the public hearing held as required under the, the State Zoning Act. The vote was seven in favor, none opposed to recommend adoption of this change. Thank you, Mr. Gardner. Any further discussion on Article 15 as presented? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 15 as presented say aye. 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 Opposed? Article 15 passed unanimously. All right, the one we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Article 16, Mr. Gardner. Yes, Mr. Moderator, I'll move Article 16 as printed in the Town warrant. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. Motion made second. Mr. Gardner for discussion, if any. Yes, the origination of this article came from the town administrator and the board of selectmen, and, and the intent of this article was simply to allow, as the article fairly clearly uh, delineates in, in pretty detailed terms, indoor growing cultivation of marijuana within the town of East Bridgewater. It only allows indoor growing, no other use, no other sales or anything else like that. Uh, the intent of this was primarily a financial intent in that we in the past had had someone interested in a, an extremely large building in East Bridgewater which was available. Uh, and at the time, the race to, to do this was going on in all the budding towns as, as we already know. Several of our budding towns, uh, West Bridgewater and Bridgewater already have indoor grow sites. Uh, which are returning substantial funds to the town. Uh, again, the intent of this was, was almost purely financial, and I'll leave it at that. And I'll also give you our recommendation. Yes, please The recommendation do. from the planning board held after our required public hearing was six in favor with one opposed to recommend adoption of this article at the town meeting. Thank you, Mr. Garner. Any further discussion on Article 16 as presented? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 16 as presented say aye. 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 Opposed? I, the moderator says it passes by two thirds. Article 17, Mr. Gardner. So, Mr. Moderator, I'll move Article 17 as printed in the warrant. I got a motion to have a second. Uh, Mr. Gardner, for discussion, if any. Okay, this is the, the follow up article that, that, that pairs with Article 16. This would create the local bylaw in the town bylaws, not a zoning bylaw, but a town bylaw as recommended by the, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to cover the legalities of having an indoor grow facility within the town. It, it follows all of the, the standard recommendations within the state law that was passed in the last, I, I believe it was originally three years ago now. So again, this was recommended as, as a, as a follow-up pairing article so that the selectmen would have the authority and the control they needed where an applicant come before the selectman to request a permit under the, the indoor grow facility sections of the zoning bylaw as well as the, the local town bylaw. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Do we have a recommendation? Did you do a recommendation uh, no, for this since, article? Since this is not a zoning bylaw oh, change, there's no recommendation. This is a, a town bylaw, bylaw change. I just need a majority. Thank you, Mr. Gardner. Any further discussion on Article 17 as presented? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 17 is presented say aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 17 passes unanimously, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Moderator. Oh, did be I miss be one? No, before you oh. adjourn. I'm going to turn the floor over to Mr. Sheedy. Thank you. Um, having the meeting on June 14th was not, it was just coincidental. But June 14th is the anniversary of the town of East Bridgewater being incorporated. This is the 198th year. So coming along in 2023, we will be planning on a huge celebration. Everything where it works right, Carol will be the chair at that point. And uh, Dale, Julius, if you'll stand for a minute, just to make sure everyone knows you. Everybody knows. You know, it, that, that's Carol's husband. Um, but, but Dale has uh, agreed to represent a committee so we can get started on this as soon as possible to make sure that we have everything in place when we get around to 2023. 
Thank you very much. It's also much. our wedding anniversary today, so we love the town so much. We got married on June 1st. The same year? Yeah, no. <laughs> He's old, but he's not that old. <laughs> Thank you for that information, David. So now I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Seconded? All in favor say aye. Good night, everybody. Have a safe summer.